All right, so there we go. So first thing first, we have to open up our command prompts and we are pip installing a pi auto GUI. So pi auto GUI. So essentially right now, Josh, this is what requests and beautiful soup does. It goes to the internet and downloads and gets information for you and it doesn't open up a window, essentially. Wow. So if you install Yeet, apparently it installs a bunch of things, none of which are called Yeet. Oh. Mm. Now I have sorcery installed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it does. But. All right. So guys, a little bit about the book, or a little bit about this. Obviously, as soon as we start automating the GUI, the GUI, however you, whatever. One more syllable. I don't care. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's regexes. Whatever, stop it. So, um, there's a couple things. If you, your code, <laughs> can be can work faster than other programs can respond so like you could be having it click and typing you know work the, the entire works of shakespeare in you know 30 seconds or whatever um which is faster than many other programs can understand so no we're not going to do pi.sleep because pi auto gui has something in there already so um one of the easiest so if you guys do realize that my code's for wigging out it's just freaking out it's not working um control alt delete will allow you to log out so that's one way you can do it there are two things called pauses and fail safes and i'm going to show you how you do that in just a sec but i'm going to explain what they are pause is obviously in between different function calls it will pause for whatever amount of time you tell it and a fail safe is either a true or false uh, variable that if true if you take your mouse and you just shove it to the top left like this, it automatically stops the program. So even if your code is telling your mouse to move around, if, you, if you're if you doing this, uh, it's obviously not, you know, you put it up there once and boom, your code is done. You may have to do this a bunch of times in order for it to register, but that's, how, that's one way to get out of loops or whatever. Yes, Michael? What if in the code it tells your mouse to go up to the top? Right? That's fine. That's why it's sometimes that you have to do it a couple times because if your code tells it to go up here for some reason, um, but typically the top left, there's typically not much at the very, very top left corner. It's not like up here where it's the exit or the start or stuff like this, but there's typically not much going on up here. Oops. Oh, I closed it. So now that we've got Pi Auto GUI, we're gonna go import Pi auto GUI and I'm gonna just do I'm just I don't know whatever pi auto GUI <clears throat> and then we're gonna go pi auto GUI so this is dot pause this is how you get it to pause after every function call for one second so that gives you time to hijack the mouse and sh and go to the top left we're also pi auto GUI dot fail safe is true This is chapter 16. This is chapter 16, yes. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open this in a... It is chapter 18. What did I say? Yeah, it's 18. All right, so... <clears throat> Yeah, uh, lost my train of thought there for a sec. So <clears throat> now those of you, I think all, yeah, all of you took intro to Python. So you guys don't remember that the top left of the corner, what are the, what top left of the screen, what are the X, Y coordinates of the top left? Anyone? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Um, and what is the bottom right? The maximum. It's the maximum resolution of your screen. 
So my resolution, and this is why in your final, you may want to code percentages and not absolute um, um, pixel numbers because my uh, display settings. So to figure out your resolution, so I have a 2736 by 1824. So to figure that out on yours, just right click the desktop, go to display settings and scroll down to you see resolution. So if you guys are coding for stuff to go to 1928 or 1920, you're only gonna go to like right here on my screen. So you may wanna do, you know, you can figure out the size of your screen by using uh, dot size, pi auto GUI dot size. So in here, pi auto GUI dot size. Whoa, hang on, what's up? Why, why is my resolution different? Is it the TV versus your surface versus the monitor? Probably it might be the TV. It might be the side. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let me turn off the TV. Oh, wait, no, let's do I this. Know like anything that has those exact measurements. I know, I'm sitting here like, that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> that, I don't know of anything. Hmm. I don't know. No, because mine, when it does it, it says the same thing every time. Yeah, mine does as well. It's 1920 by 1280. I don't know. <clears throat> but what you guys can do is, you know, x comma y equals pi little GUI. So now I have... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, duplicate. So what you can do is you can set up x and y to equal pi little GUI dot size. And now I have the x width and the y width of the screen. And now if you wanted something to be 100, if you want something to take up the whole screen, you could just do x times 1 is that. But if you wanted it to be 50% of the way across the screen, you do x, x times 0.5. And now you're at 684 of the screen. Does that make sense? So instead of using absolute pixels, find the size of the screen is running on and then have your code go off of that. Does that make sense? I don't have attribute size. Pi auto GUI dot size? Yeah. Do you have the... Pi auto GUI has no attribute size. Did you import... Did you, you spell it right? I might not have, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure I did because it doesn't throw an error until... Hmm. All lowercase, what's this? What, what did you save your code as something like pi auto GUI? Uh, no. Okay, good. Warning note never save your code as the name of a module or basically make it unique. Like, maybe. <laughs> see? So if you name <laughs> pi auto GUI and you import it, you're importing the file you're working on into itself that doesn't have any doesn't have an attribute dot size. So to prevent that, you know, you do pi auto GUI underscore in class or learning pi auto GUI or Wait, something like that. Don't worry, it happens. It literally happens all the time. So what is size giving you? Size is giving me the width. It should be of my screen. In pixels, but I, the same as yours? No, I would think mine is 2736 by 1824. No. Wait, hang on, hang on. What's 1368 times 2? 1824. Oh, so I don't know why it's giving me half. Whatever. So we're gonna we're gonna continue with this. Now there is this really cool thing that we're going to do with our mouse, and we're actually going to have it give the coordinates on screen. So if it, you'll have a little command window on the side and it will be, you know, give you the X, X and Y position of the mouse in real time. So you can use that to like, to figure out the width of the screen and have your code work, but we're not gonna get to that yet. Um, 
So do you guys have questions on, I'll figure out why size is giving me half of what it should. Um, but other than that, do you guys have questions so far? Take that as a no. Cool, so now we're gonna move the mouse and we've already import GUI, so we're gonna go for I in range 10 and then you're gonna go pi auto GUI dot <clears throat> move capital T2. So we're going to move the mouse across the screen and we gotta give it an X. We give it an X position, a Y position, and the duration is, I can't remember how long, if it's that's how long it stays there or that's how long it takes to get there. It's one of the two. I think it's how long it stays there. Duration is 20.25. And then we're going to copy this. And instead of 100 to 100, we're going to go 200 to 100, 200 to 200, 100 to 200. So basically, what this is going to do is it's going to go around in a square across our screen. Where will the mouse like actually? Yep. So I'll save that. This is chapter 18. Can I run it or will it? Yeah, go ahead and run it. Wait. I'm just saving stuff to the. Hold on. Don't start. Yo, it's going. It's going. Is sentient. Hold up. My computer has become sentient. It's going to take a little. Your little surface three. <laughs> At least a <laughs> So right now what it's doing is it's moving to the absolute position 100, 200, 100, 100, 200, 200, 200, 200 100. Ah, the feel safe isn't working. <laughs> it should. There you go. Oh, mine worked. No. Horizon Zero. No. Now, what I want you guys. Oh, shoot. <laughs> no, I actually feel like close out of Python. <laughs> you write code to just close out of Python oh, every yeah. time you run it. Oh, it's done. Okay. That'd be the best code ever. Now, guys, there's also move rel, oh. which is move relative to where the mouse currently is. Uh, is it rel or rel? Oh, rel. Sorry. So, is it just supposed to go like this? So, 100, hang on, hang on. So we're gonna go zero, 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 negative 100, and negative 100. So what this is going to do, I'm gonna leave my mouse here. I'm gonna leave my mouse here, and instead of going all the way to the top left and doing that circle, it's gonna do something else. So it's moving from where my uh, cursor was, and, what, and if I move it, it's still going to do that. So if I move it down here, so this makes a square wherever the mouse currently is. It doesn't move it to a place, it moves it relative to where the mouse currently is. Does that make sense? Oh, so it just moves it. Like, it doesn't move, start at a specific place. It starts wherever it is. Like, that's kind of cool. Do you guys have questions on that? Do you guys understand why? Do you guys see that it's 100, 0, 0, 100? Why is this a negative 100? Yeah, it's moving left and up. Well, this it's moving up here and it's moving left here. Oh, sorry, because the top left is... So top left is zero, zero. This is really cool. Though. That's cool to hear. I remember making... Can you write down Mr. Folter? This is cooler than Minecraft. Yay. <laughs> I clicked Wait, on a tab. I have not opened Minecraft all That's so cool. except for when... Except for at the very beginning. I just opened Minecraft. Wait, can you scroll up? Do you guys remember what my flex was a thing? Oh, yeah. 
I tried to go on out of my surface and it like broke my surface. <laughs> I remember it's I got auto an auto clicker and an auto mouse mover, and I just had it simulate human action. I turned it on. One day I went into like a parkour section so you can't get kicked for an activity because you just die. Just things are really bad. And I just farmed XP for it. All day. Why are you the smartest problem? All right. Back to the server. Apparently, they started giving you XP rewards, so I just sat on like a bucket of like redeem rewards. Level up, level up. Wait, it's not fair. What? Oh, I never mind. Sir. Okay. Pi auto GUI dot <clears throat> position. All right, that's going to give us the Y position all the time. Wait. Oh, right. I'm trying to copy this down. I know. But this is also saved on the Pi game resources, or the Python resources. Yes, Nick. What is the error set? What is Oh, my error? Yeah, I, I, got, I got this error set. Oh, so if your code is running, right, this is just the fail safe when you move it up to the top. So it sets the fail safe to false and kills your program. Oh. Yes. Uh, so if you put display mouse position, it gives it like constant, right? Like, Are you s asking me if you use uh, display so, mouse position? Well, I'm just saying, because what you can do is do display mouse position, and then you can just move your mouse wherever, and you can find out any position. I, yes, but what when you say display mouse position, are you literally typing the word display mouse? Oh, no, uh, pi auto gui dot display capital M for mouse position. Wait, wait, still. What? Can I actually open Minecraft just to watch it like move it, like move my no. hand? No. So you're saying this one here? Yeah, and then parentheses. Not only is it that, it's also giving you the color. Oh, wait. The RGB. Yeah. Do you think that's all? Look at that. Set that. No. Display mount. So. Now, we're going to do something like that, uh, except running in Python. We're going to run it in the command prompt so it's less invasive. <laughs> but that is that was exactly what we were going to get into is you could do that so while true so apparently it's reading my screen is only having 130 130 or 1368 pixels wide so maybe the res I don't know why the resolution would be double. I don't know. I got to figure that out. But we'll have literally this, but in the command prompt. Oh man, I can hear the fan on my computer. Heat up, work it's starting to work. That's how you know you're on the bus. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think print. Yeah, we don't want. We don't necessarily want. Um, Is it in here? We don't necessarily want it to run through Python. So I thought it was in this book. I don't know. I'll figure that out. But I got to stop this. Do you guys have questions so far? Is this so much easier than the like, where do you have to do the browser dot? Element. Yeah, like if you know where it is, and that's what we're going to get to. Is we're going to get find an image on the screen. Finding an image, it has to be the exact same pixels for it to find it. Yo, we should write our own like uh, gallery of Babel. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> yes, there is code that writes code. <laughs> That's so cool. Stolter, do you know what the gallery of right. No, we'll figure it out later. Uh, so, so cool. call the position. I want.
I think if we just hang on. If we save if we save this uh, and then we do pi auto GUI dot what is it? Position? Yeah, position. Uh, and then if I find this Why did it close? Oh, because it's not a loop. Here we go. Actually, I think this is all you have to do while true. Save it. Close it. And that gives you a history. We don't want a history. We want it to rewrite itself. So. Oh, no, this is what you would do. So we'll actually do this right now because we, well, we got about 10 minutes, but I think this is a really useful thing. So uh, open up uh, a new file or use the same one you've been using. And what we're going to do, if you do it just like this, it doesn't, oh shoot, how do you get rid of it? All right, we may do this later. No, it's just, it's something, it's, it, displays it, erases it, and displays it. As opposed to just print, 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 print. Yeah. And I forgot, I mean, it's. I found it, it's right here. But it's basically, it prints it, does a blank over everything, and then prints it again. So instead of having 30 million lines, you only have one line. Oh. Um, so all you have to do for that, so in the book, it tells you to do all this fancy stuff, and we're just like, we've got, we've got most of it. So we're gonna, uh, this isn't a new file. You yeah, you guys can't. Oop. So we're gonna do x comma y just like we did earlier. So now x equals. Yeah. So do this with me. Um, then we're going to do. Where is it? X. Position string equals x. plus str uh, x, but this is right justified, which we didn't go over for plus. I'll explain what it does in a sec. str y dot r just for position string print pause string with n equals bam and then print backslash b times the length of position string comma end is bum bum flush oh, I can't remember what flush does All right, so now when we run this, oh, hang on. Oh, I missed it on us. Hmm. So it doesn't work. And if I remember correctly, that's because we, for some reason, it doesn't work in Python. But if you close this and open it in command prompt, it works. Yeah, there you go. Oh. So now, and by opening in command prompt, all you need to do is double click it. And because our code, you guys remember when you double click a file, it opens it and closes it in black real quick? Yeah, you have to That's be, well, you have to at pause if you're doing a batch file or in your code, it never ends, right? Okay. So if you, it, once it gets to the end of the code, it closes the command prompt window. 
our code never ends because it's a never ending loop. So that's why we can. What? Yeah, one sec. Do you guys understand why this works? Yeah, Okay. Oops. So that's like it will be extreme. It'll be really helpful when you guys are trying to uh, get to certain spots. Yeah, exactly. And again, I can't remember what flush does. So let's see what happens if you don't have it. Oh wait, we know that doesn't work. Hmm. Apparently, it doesn't do anything. We'll leave it there. Yeah. Hey. And so if you want to add some stuff while you guys are doing it, you can just print control plus C to quit. And then you go try, then accept. What is it? Accept keyboard interrupt. I mean, if you click the X button, Yeah. Well, what if the person doesn't know how to do that? But they know how to do control C. You would think so. Teachers and students, please excuse this interruption. We are now going to do a severe weather drill, so please move to the location that each student and teacher needs to move to for a severe weather drill. Again, All right.